welcome back everyone so today we are going to be building an object with particles by using n particles so let's quickly get into it so here i have a basic setup i have a simple model i have a bg a camera setup for a perfect view and one hdr for the lighting purpose so i'm gonna demonstrate this quickly with a normal object then we'll see how we can use this complex structure to fill, fill it up with the n particles so I'm going to quickly turn this off first and let's start off by simple filter like maybe a sphere. So I'm going to quickly expand this and let's make a subdivision of it. I'm going to quickly switch to my effects menu and in end particles you'll see one option called fill object. So what I'm going to do is click on this setting icons so where we can pretty much add some settings. Now, before doing that, make sure you turn on your X-ray mode just so you can see what's happening with the sphere once you add your end particles inside of this object. So I'm going to select this, go to end cloth, uh, sorry, end particles, and fill object. So here, by default, I think uh, reset settings. All right. So here you'll see that by default you get resolution of 10, and then you have fill bounds x, max, y, and so on. What is the most important factor here is the particle density and the resolution. Resolution will determine the quality of your spheres and particle density will basically decide density of the particles. So here what we are going to do is make the resolution to somewhere about 20. You can always go back and change this. Uh, you have to play and tweak around with it. And I'm going to keep the particle density to somewhere about 2000. And then we'll see how much it fills it up. So I'm going to hit apply and particle fill. And here you'll notice that we don't get much of a particles here. If I go to my attributes here, I'm going to quickly, yeah, there you go. I'm going to quickly go into the shading and instead of using points, what you can do is take spheres. All right, so here you can see we have a lot of spheres and they are pretty much intersecting with each other. So what I'm going to do is quickly get into the particle size and reduce this to somewhere like reasonably low. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. Now, what we want is the sphere should be colliding with the object. So what we are going to do is select the sphere and go to end cloth and pass the collider. So by default, with n particles, you get the nuclear. That's why we already have the dynamic supply. That means we have the gravity. So if I hit play here, you'll see that particles are colliding here perfectly. Now, here's one thing you'll notice is the particle are kind of collapsing here. And the way to fix this is basically two things. The first thing is, going to your end particles and turning on the self collide so the particle will collide with each other now if i play this all right so there you go so this is how you can then you can add a new glass material to the sphere and you can add some random colors to the particle as well so if you don't want this much dense particle what you can do is simply i'm going to get rid of particle with its body and so on. I'm going to select this again, go to in particle, fill object, and I'm going to decrease the resolution to somewhere like 10 and particle fill. And here now you'll notice that we have less amount of spheres. And if I turn this again to spheres, let's reduce the size to somewhere like 2. So here you'll notice you get less sphere. So if you want more sphere, you just add a bit more resolution to your particles. And then again, make this as a passive collider and make this, yeah, there you go. So pretty neat and fun way to create a particle inside of any object. You can create a gumball machine with this technique. So now coming back to the original thing, which is adding the same technique to a complex structure. The technique remains the same. Uh, the only difference is it will take more time to calculate. So if I select this and go to n particle fill object, I'm going to make the resolution to somewhere about 10 and I'm going to hit fill particles and let's close this and if I show you, oh sorry, fill object and you won't see much happening because the overall density of the particle is not enough so I'm going to keep increasing until I see something. I'm going to make this somewhere about 20. I'm going to hit fill particles. Here you see small amount of particle here somewhere. All right, so I think Finally, the particles are big enough to put inside it, I guess. But I don't see much of happening. And let me make it spheres. And here you'll see that you only get three spheres, not more than that, because the particle resolution is too low for this kind of complex structure. So what I want to do is delete this again. And this is obviously a trial and error, so I'm going to keep 
guiding this up until I get a decent amount of result. I'm gonna hit resolution 30 and particle fill and here you'll notice that we are already getting a lot of delay and a lot of, lot of calculation going on with the overall particle filling here. So if I make this spheres again, make this 100, you'll notice that we get more spheres added into our model but they are still not enough to fill the whole model up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add bit more I'm gonna go a lot higher this time I'm gonna go for something like maybe a hundred and I'm gonna hit particle fill and let's see how much time it takes to calculate the whole thing all right so it's done it probably took about two minutes now we'll see how we can do this let's hit close and here you see that it fills up the particles pretty nicely we can add a bit more resolution but I think it's pretty good for now so I'm gonna quickly make this as space and let's reduce the size to sort of maybe like Let's go to the higher 50. Yeah, something like this. Let's go a little lower 40. It's nice. And let's make sure it's self collided. That's it. So, obviously, the particles won't collide with the model right now. So, I'm going to select my pose here and uh, make this as a passive collider. All right. So, I think the dynamics has been applied. And now, if we hit play, the particles are colliding with the model. Perfect. So this looks pretty interesting now. This looks pretty nice. So if I go to my camera here, Arnold IPR, let's hit one. So this is our model here. I'm gonna quickly add a new material to our model. So let's assign new material. Go to Arnold, stand surface, and let's call this class. And I'm going to quickly choose a glass preset just so we can speed up the process. And let's turn this on. So this looks pretty nice. You have nice particles flowing through the body. And uh, if you want more better results, what you can do is go to advance, add caustics, and exit to background. And make sure that your opaque has been turned off. By default, it's turned on. Make sure it's turned off. Now we'll add more dynamics to this. Um, bit more complexity by simply making colorful particles so what you can do is let me just close this you can select your particles right click assign new material and again we'll apply a stand surface and we'll call this particles right let's close this close this and let's go to our hypersheet in the hypersheet we are going to apply the same method that we did for random particle colors what we are going to do is go here and add a color jitter in the color jitter, we'll attach the color to the base color. And with the color jitter input, we are going to choose any color, for example, this. Let's go to the face, and you can simply change the color to something like this. Okay. Let's keep it like this, and that's it. So if we go back here and hit IPR, we should see random particle color. And yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna quickly switch to a bit more higher resolution for the camera and some diffuse samples. All right, so that's it. There we go. We have nice glass material going on. Play more around with the material uh, to get a desired look. You can get some frosted look around here. We have nice particles flowing through the body and so on. So have fun with this, play around with this technique. I would suggest first playing with it with a normal primitive, with a default primitive, and then adding more complex structure into your scene. And give time for the calculation. Um, don't kind of have some patience regarding the end particle. It does take a lot of time, but the end result is pretty interesting. So play around with material, play around with particles, have some more fun with this. Maybe add some turbulence inside of the particles to get more out of this. Maybe animate this or have a batch render for this and you'll have a perfect look. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.